think uh, the good news about the first three years was... The following program was recorded at the annual Smart Ops Forum, held this year in Chicago. I'm pleased to welcome Editor-in-Chief of Supply Chain Brain, Russell Goodman. Joining us for a conversation today on bringing new science to the global supply chain planning is Sridhar Tyre, CEO and founder of Smart Ops. Sridhar, welcome. Thank you. Sridhar, we know that you, the, you founded Smart Ops some 10 years or so ago, but I guess the question is why? What was the need in the industry that you saw at the time? What was inadequate about what was around? Good question. In fact, my wife asks me that question all the time. So uh, I think the simplest answer to give is uh, people had made several investments in technology. They had invested in consultants. Uh, many of the larger companies had their own internal consultants. And in spite of all of this, they felt that they did not get the benefits of inventory reductions that they were hoping to get along the way. So I thought, uh, what's going on here? Uh, as you know, I'm a professor at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, usually professors stay out of this kind of real world stuff. Mm -hmm. But it became uh, quite intriguing uh, that people would spend all this effort trying to reduce inventories, yet at the end of uh, their journey, uh, feel that they have not accomplished you know, what they're hoping for. So I think the real need I saw in the marketplace was people struggling to get their inventories in order, trying almost everything that they could uh, and looking for something new. Uh, my own uh, educational background and research was in an area, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, which I thought was the missing piece. And if I could bring that uh, to the marketplace, uh, I felt maybe uh, we would solve that puzzle. Walk us through, if you will, uh, the first three years or so of Smart Ops when the company was getting off to a start uh, undoubtedly dealing with one challenge after another. Must have been a very exciting time. Walk us through that. Yeah, it was very exciting. Uh, first, uh, I think I started the company in 2000. So you know that it was coming off the internet bubble. So we were fighting, I think, a deep uh, skepticism uh, you know, against technology uh, and supply chain technology. Uh, on the other hand, I think it was a great time to start a company because not many people had the courage to start companies. Mm. And so on the one hand, uh, the market and the floods were against us. But on the other hand, uh, we felt that uh, that was the right time to get started. So the first three years, I would break it down into three major challenges. Uh, beyond the fact that the market was skeptical about technology and uh, overclaim of supply chain uh, software. The real challenge I felt was people would not admit that uh, there was a gap. Uh, it's one of those things. Before you can uh, get help, you should admit that you need help. Mm -hmm. uh, so in my first year, I think I made 100 trips to customers or prospects. And I probably had two folks who quietly told me, I know what you're trying to say, Professor. It's politically incorrect to go back to my CFO and say, you know, all the stuff that we did, it wasn't gonna give us inventory benefits anyway. Mm -hmm. So you gotta spin it a little differently, uh, you know. So I felt that the couple of people understood the message and if I could focus on those who were ready to admit uh, that something new was needed, uh, we could get started. So I think the first challenge was to identify those who would admit that something new would be needed. Mm -hmm. The second challenge uh, was to convince uh, their uh, senior management that they should invest in uh, testing this new thing out. Again, beyond the skepticism uh, of past investments, uh, the last thing they wanted was some professor from Pittsburgh claiming that he has found the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I think uh, American businesses are appropriately skeptical of professors as much as they are of software. And so the second challenge was, how do we get companies to test out this uh, without uh, you know, too much investment on their side? So we came up with this idea called proof of concept, where we would take a certain sliver of their supply chain and then say, what are you doing today? What are your inventory levels today? What are your service levels today? What are your total costs today? And now suppose you could do it differently, and we will actually run it. 
uh, in a different way. Let's compare our answers. Mm. Are there places where we, our inventory suggestions are much lower than yours? Uh, I would think so. But more importantly, I think we gained credibility when we showed that in several places, their inventory was too low, that they should actually increase it. That is why this was not about inventory reduction. It was about inventory right sizing. Because if their inventories are always above what they needed to be, they should have no service level problems. So how can somebody have an inventory problem and a service level problem at the same time? It must be the case that they have the wrong stuff in the wrong place mm -hmm. at the wrong time. So we did a few of these uh, proof of value uh, studies. We did that at John Deere. Uh, we did that at Kellogg's. Uh, we did that at Caterpillar. Uh, and these were companies that uh, were, what I thought, uh, mature in their understanding of uh, what they already had with respect to technologies and consulting, and what was something new. And uh, that process that we created in reaction to the skepticism, uh, I think has turned out to be very good for us. Well now tell us uh, about phase two. Was everything smooth sailing from that point on? <laughs> Everybody was convinced? What was that all about? I think uh, the good news about the first three years was the class of customers that decided to buy uh, smart hubs. Uh, they took a risk uh, by buying software from a professor who had never uh, built software mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. uh, we used it to our advantage. We said, look, you bought software from I2 and Manulogistics and SAP. How about trying to buy software from somebody who hasn't sold you, you know, software before? Mm -hmm. How bad can it be? Right. Uh, but I think uh, the class of people, whether it be Kellogg's, Bayer Material Science, Caterpillar, John Deere, I think are so well respected uh, that the second phase, it stopped being about, hey, uh, I think this can be done using old technologies. The second phase was about, okay, if this is really something new, uh, can folks uh, at our companies absorb it? What is the usability of it? And uh, at the same time, several other companies cropped up. They noticed the kind of deals we were doing. Uh, incumbents like I2 and Managistics added some modules. New companies came in. And so the competitive structure in phase two was less about, hey, what is this business of enterprise inventory optimization? Uh, a, a, a phrase, by the way, we coined. Mm -hmm. Before smart ops came along, this, was, this EIO was never around. So EIO stopped being something uh, to deny. The question then became which vendor to buy from and will it work in, uh, you know, in our own company. There I thought uh, it was our most competitive uh, three or four years for two reasons. Uh, many uh, companies uh, that had invested in I2 and Managistics uh, were obviously interested in keeping the relationship uh, with those vendors and seeing what they could do. And so there was uh, some protection of those uh, you know, customers from I2 that it was very difficult for us to get in unless we were able to show significant improvement over what I2 or Menu could claim. The second was there were very many low-cost competitors who came in and said, oh, we can do it for $30,000 or we could do it for $100,000. So I thought the second phase uh, was uh, taking care of the low cost group by telling folks that, hey, if you could solve the global inventory problem that you've had for 10 years at $100,000, good for you. Uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. And then going back to some of the core uh, customers of I2 and Managistics, Unilever is an example of a Managistics shop, uh, Caterpillar was an I2 shop and a few other shops uh, who uh, then came out and said, you know what, we got to try something new. And I think the next, those four years, it was very competitive, but I think uh, we managed to penetrate uh, some good accounts uh, as well as, uh, you know, take out some of the low cost. What about now? What about today? Where are we now? So uh, what happened at the end of 2006 or 2007 uh, was the fact that we stopped being a rogue supply chain company and we became more and more mainstream. Mm -hmm. I used to joke to folks that uh, I always thought of Smart Ops as, and me, to be like Han Solo of uh, Star Wars. You know, mm -hmm. we and Chewbacca are going around fighting the, uh, the Death Star and the Emperor. Mm -hmm. um, by 2006 or 2007, some of my competition was portraying me as Darth Vader, uh, as if I was the bad guy. I thought it was an amusing turn of events. 
but we also had uh, made a very good strategic choice, uh, which is to partner with SAP. We noticed that 60 to 65 percent of our customer base had selected SAP for their ERP systems. Mm. It became quite natural for their IT groups and their CIO to ask, are you compatible with SAP? Uh, why didn't SAP do this themselves? How do you know that they're not building something that I will get for free? Uh, so we, uh, I think, accommodated and answered those questions by creating a formal partnership uh, with SAP. Uh, in 2006, we signed up uh, as an EBS partner. EBS stands for Endorsed Business Solution where SAP markets our products and gets a revenue share mm -hmm. when we uh, sell it to those accounts. Uh, I believe that SmartOps was the most successful EBS partner in 07 and 08. So in 2009, SAP approached us uh, to see if we could become their solution extension, their so-called reseller partner, which was announced uh, around this time last year, where we are formally on SAP's price book uh, which means that uh, beyond the technical uh, correctness and compatibility, their sales force is also allowed to market and sell our products uh, under their uh, uh, under their umbrella. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, from 06 to 09, uh, building the SAP partnership and solidifying the SAP partnership uh, has been uh, of, uh, of great strategic importance to us. If we can, final question, I want you to look prospectively. And tell us, where do you see the industry going? What are going to be the challenges? What are the trends? And what is Smart Ops going to do to meet those? I think that's a question that I think about most. Uh, since we now have a nice commercial machinery working and we have some good groups of mm -hmm. uh, people implementing the software, uh, after maybe eight years of being in the weeds, it has allowed me to take a step back and ask the same kind of question. How will the next 10 years mm -hmm. uh, look like? I believe uh, right from uh, the start, uh, and I, th that hasn't changed, is supply chain folks are looking for competitive advantage and innovation to keep going. And I believe that will continue to remain. And Smart Ops, uh, I think, is well positioned uh, to continue uh, down that path. A few years ago, uh, I also started a co-innovation program with our customers. So Kellogg's has been a customer of ours since 2003. Uh, later on, they came to us and they said, hey, uh, you are a supply chain person, you're an operations research uh, uh, kind of a company. Uh, how about solving problems other than the original problem? And so working with uh, Kellogg's, we created a new module called service level optimization that looks to uh, understand how to segment the customer base uh, and provide the highest profit solution for companies. So that product was released last year. Conagra Foods became our customer in 2006, and they said, hey, you're helping us manage supply chain inventories outside the plant. Mm -hmm. But what about inventories inside the plant? Many process uh, companies have a lot of cycle stock inventories inside the plant, mm -hmm. and they felt that uh, we could help them there. So working closely with Conagra, we created a product called um, uh, Production Planning with Patterns Optimizer, which is now out. And uh, again, I think I, I would assume that uh, working forward with many other customers like Kellogg's and uh, ConAgra Foods will continue uh, to co-innovate and bring uh, new products to the market that uh, will, I think, improve global supply chain planning. Well, Sridhar, it's certainly been a very interesting past and it certainly looks like the future is quite bright for Smart Ops. Thank you for sitting down with us today. No, thank you very much for taking the time. Sridhar Tire, CEO and founder of Smart Ops, speaking with us today about bringing new science to global supply chain planning. Thank you for watching.